Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about the crypto markets and where some of our models think we are going. So I'm mainly going to be focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum here, those being the big players, those really being the ones that have been leading the rally out of the beginning of the year. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So first off with Bitcoin, just more recently, it's been falling off, right? We, we went all the way from around 30K to back down to 27.7K. And really within this range that we've been in here ever since March, emotions have been fluctuating wildly. If you look at crypto Twitter, every time we have a move up, everyone says we're going to the moon, new all-time highs are coming soon. Then every time we move down, people are saying that the bear market's back, we're gonna go set new lows. Then they reverse again, then they reverse again. And so really with these kind of sideways chop points, when you look at this in context, you know, if we just go back into Bitcoin's history, look at previous times where we moved sideways, you know, we look back at these times and say, oh man, what a great time to be buying Bitcoin, for example, through here. But you, you know, the emotion was probably fluctuating wildly through here. And that's why I don't like to just kind of go with the crowd's emotion when we're talking about these market movements, because the emotion is just going to swing wildly with these tiny moves that ultimately, when we look back in the past, you look at any of these times prices have been going sideways and you either come to the conclusion that it's all basically the same, that this is a not so great time to be buying Bitcoin, you should have waited till lower, or vice versa, you know, this is a great time to be buying Bitcoin, things went off to the moon right afterwards. And so what I like to do is look at data, look at models that aren't susceptible to emotion, that don't care about what we think or what we feel, are just going to tell it like they see it. So... Basically, what I want to do in this video is talk about what I'm looking at kind of a bit more short term with Bitcoin, and Ethereum and what that tells me about the broader market. Again, stripped out of all those emotions. So here I'm at our website, PolarityDigital.io, link in the description. This is a site we launched in collaboration with Jay over at Daily Crypto Analysis. Definitely recommend go checking out his channel if you have not already, link to it in the description. And I want to talk about two models in particular here today. The MDC, the Market Direction Classifier, then I'll also talk about the short-term UDPI, our risk model. So let's talk about the MDC for Bitcoin first. So the market, market direction classifier, if you're not familiar, is a trend model. Basically, the idea is that if price gets above this critical level line, that's this teal line here, then that's bullish. And if you get a clear break above it, then you can usually expect a decent amount of upside to follow. So for example, back here in the summer of 21, clear breakout above it. And then, you know, we went off to all-time highs. And then vice versa, a clear breakdown below it oftentimes leads to a lot more pain. And we saw that multiple times throughout this bear market. So if we zoom in on more recent price action, we can see the MDC has been doing a really good job of navigating this more recent rally out of the, uh, at the beginning of the year, you know, out of January of this year. So, you know, we broke decisively above it back here in January, came back here and held it as support over here in March. So really kind of consolidating and then bouncing right around the critical level back to the upside. And what I've been looking at more recently is what's going on right now. We're coming back down and it looks quite likely like Bitcoin is going to retest it. And so I think it's gonna be really important to watch in the short term is how does price react around the MDC critical level? Do we get something like we got in March where even if we break below it a little bit, do we more or less kind of stall out at that level and then reverse quickly to the upside? basically holding it as support. If we do that, if we're able to hold support at this level, then I think it's reasonable that another leg to the upside could follow after that. Another move to the upside is quite plausible off of that happening. But if we get, if we fall below it, you know, if we kind of come, kind of come down, slice below it and just decisively break down below it like we did back over here, for example, or over here, then that would be concerning. That might be a signal that more pain is gonna come maybe down to these lower levels down here. And then, you know, in a more extreme scenario, maybe even going all the way back down into the bear market lows. Now, I think for that to happen, things would have to get very bloody, not just in the crypto markets, but also probably in broader markets as well. You know, unless something like catastrophic within crypto happened, like Binance collapsing or something like that happening, I think broader markets would have to really kind of start falling off as well. And the dollar, for example, start rallying for us to see a breakdown that low. But certainly if we broke, broke below it decisively, going back down to some of these lower levels back down here would certainly be in the cards in my opinion. So I think it's quite important what Bitcoin does as it tests this critical level. So I think I'm gonna be watching very closely 
And you can watch it yourself over at PolarityDigital.io. So obviously not financial advice. You should make of these data as you will. That's something I'm going to watch. I think we hold it as support. That is going to be a bullish sign. Clear breakdown below it would be quite concerning. And if you look over at Ethereum, we can see a similar dynamic starting to play out here more recently. So as with Bitcoin, you know, we've kind of had a decisive break above the Ethereum critical level back here in January. And then we came down and just like Bitcoin held it as support and then rallied back to the upside off of it. Now we're coming down closer. Ethereum has a little bit more room to before it hits this critical level on its MDC, but we're getting there. And so a similar thing would be the case here. Do we get a quick bounce off it? Do we hold it as support and bounce off it to the upside? Quite bullish. Do we get a clear breakdown below it? Quite concerning, quite bearish. So similar narratives being um, played out here for both of the largest assets in the crypto space. They're both at what I would call a pretty important level for more short-term price action. And again, I'm saying this short-term, I don't think that this invalidates a longer-term bullish narrative for something like Bitcoin, for example, because let's say, for example, even if we did break back down to the bear market lows, well, that might just be something that looks an awful lot like 2015, you know, where we rallied up, then we went back down and retested bear market belows, um, lows, and then, you know, off we went into the ultimate bull market. And so I think a lot of people, you know, if we were to do that, would say, up, oh, all right, that's clear. This is just a, a bear market rally. We're off to new lows, et cetera. You know, everything's, everything's super bleak. Could happen. But I also think that there's a possibility that we people would get bearish. We just shake out, you know, even more shaking out would happen. More supply would kind of go to the, you know, uh, the more strong hands. And then, you know, it might be the case that we're able to resume the, bear, the bull market a little bit later. We'd have to see how things look by the time we'd get there, of course, if that happened. But just something to keep in mind that even if that were to happen, a lot of people would feel like it's the end of the world. But crypto is more nuanced than that. And usually when people are saying that it's dead is the point where it's hitting at least a local bottom. You know, that's what happened back over here. But I still think that there's a very reasonable chance that we do hold these levels as support here. And then we set in another leg back up to the upside. And that's, again, what I'm going to be watching over here. Now, the other thing that I'm watching that gives me some you know, more reason to believe that we could catch a notable bounce off of these levels is what's going on with our short-term UDPI risk model. So this is a, a risk model that we have here at the channel. And if you're not familiar, basically higher levels mean higher risk, lower levels mean lower risk. And this is a short-term version of it. So it cares about moves that play out over days to weeks, the more short-term in its focus. And so when we look at more recent action with Bitcoin, what we can notice is that off at this level at around negative three, has acted as the staging, the launching ground for these two big moves up in this rally that we've seen. So back here in January, we were back down to about negative three on the short-term UDPI, and then off to the races we went and shot up in this big rally into the end of January, into, into February. We then corrected, and then in that correction, you see short-term risk cooled all the way back off to about negative three, and then off to the races we went again. So the short-term UDPI ranged from five to negative five. So negative three is quite low. That's where the model is giving quite a bit more plausible room to the upside relative to the downside in the short term. And the fact that we've seen this consistently act as this launching point or as this kind of uh, bottoming point for risk and then price tends to move up and then risk moves up along with it. I think it's reasonable to think that if we see the short-term UDPI continue to move down for Bitcoin, we're getting very close to negative three already. And if we do get that test of the critical level, and let's say we spend a little bit of time around there, I think it's quite reasonable to think the short-term UDPI could cool off to a similar level around negative three. And that you know could end up being that staging ground for the next rally like we saw here. Nothing's guaranteed, of course. We could continue to move down and then see the short-term UDPI move even lower, you know, like what happened here in November. But negative three has often acted at, you know, recently has acted as this kind of important level. And even if we just go back in history and look at some of these other points in time, negative three is oftentimes acted as this kind of important level. You see it in the bull market here in 2017, then also in the bear market, you know, of, uh, of 2018, we're often in these kind of volatile times is around negative three that we found that local low for moving back to the upside. Likewise, over here, negative three, more or less back over here, you know, around negative three, Etc. It's often been an important level for the Bitcoin short-term UDPI. So I'm going to be watching that quite closely. And again, if we start seeing price really the kind of the uh, downward momentum really stall 
as we see the short-term UDPI get to around negative three, as we see price get back to MDC critical level, that might be a sign that a reversal back to the upside could be coming. If we look at Ethereum's um, short-term UDPI, it's a short-term risk, um, we're also getting back down to a level that's right around where we were the last time we bounced. So here for, for Ethereum, it's actually here negative 1.45, so a bit higher than for Bitcoin. This is actually something you see often with Ethereum, where Ethereum tends to spend more time in kind of the higher kind of short-term risk levels than Bitcoin. But again, you know, we're setting, we're kind of at a similar level that we were, we were before as this rally started, getting back here to around, you know, negative uh, 1.4. And then, you know, negative 1.75 is where we were when we set off this rally at the beginning. So in this kind of general ballpark between negative one, negative two is again, a place where a plausible kind of low point for short-term risk to set the stage for some moves to the upside is potentially there. So again, Ethereum, as price moves and maybe has to goes back and retest the MC critical level, what happens with the short-term UDPI? If that keeps cooling off and getting back down to some of these levels, that might again be a, a possible place for another move to the upside would happen. So I what I'm gonna be looking for is how does price react at these important levels and how does it react as short-term risk gets back down to these levels? If we start seeing a stalling out in negative momentum and, and a push to the upside, a more convincing push to the upside, I think that would be a very bullish sign, might suggest at least short term, another leg up could be coming. So nothing's guaranteed, obviously. We're gonna have to watch and see what happens. But I per personally prefer to look at the model from the lens of these models. What are the models saying and how is price interacting with some of these levels that we um, think should be important based on how price has reacted to these levels in the past? And I think that just gives us a way of navigating the markets that's less emotion driven, that's less just based on FOMO or just fear and just kind of constantly ping ponging back up and down with these tiny short term price movements and thinking, OK, when is a price movement likely to actually be meaningful versus just noise? And that's where I think these models can really help us. All right. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, put a lot of updates, put indicators and more over there and check out QWERTYDigital.io where we have live data, data from our models and more.